the last time we were together, we were looking at uh, our, we said that the cross is the dividing line. The cross is the dividing line. And, and there are a few things I will, I will go back to so that maybe we can be able to, to walk together. I remember I, I said the cross is the dividing line. And I said that the Old Testament and the New Testament are different in that the Old Testament uh, is before Jesus came. That's why it's called the Old Testament. The New Testament is after Jesus came. That's why it's called the New Testament. Born as if you were. And I give an analogy of maybe if I had a fiancé who lived out of the country and the only way we can communicate is through letters. And I say that that letter that I received from my fiancé or my wife for that matter is very dear. That letter is very dear. I read it word by word and try to interpret that letter depending on our relationship. One as it will. And therefore I say if my wife comes back and I still I'm stuck with the letter, something is wrong with me. Say better still if I had a photo, see she sent me a photo, I'll have that photo very close to my heart. But if my wife comes and I'm still learning aloud with a photo, something is wrong with me. One as if you will. There's a problem with me. And, and that's what we say. That the Old Testament were letters that were sent to us. For us to understand and know Jesus before he came. That's why it's called the Old Testament is Jesus concealed. And the New Testament is Jesus revealed. Is that so? One as if you will. And, and therefore, that's what we are saying is that Jesus has come. And now he lives in your heart. In fact, when you go to John chapter 17, I think verse 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they may know him. They may know him. They say, this is eternal life, that they may know him. Yeah? They may know him. Eternal life is knowing someone. Eternal life is not just the length of this. It's a relationship. It's a relationship that you have with someone. And that's what we are saying. That now that Jesus has come, we look the Old Testament and we lead the New Testament with the light of the Old Testament. Uh, uh, the other way around. With the Old Testament, with the light, in the light of the New Testament. One as if you will. Amen. And, and uh, our time may not allow me to go in depth in that. But I'll still stick on the fact and try to bring out the New Testament the cross is the dividing line between the and the new. And, and now look at Psalms 51. Psalms 51 I'll pick a few verses here and there uh, because of our time again. Um, I'll pick verse 2. Verse 2 says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. This is before the cross. Paul, uh, David would play this uh, prayer one as if you will. And it was a buried player in, that, in those days before the cross. And he could say, wash me thoroughly. But for you and me living on this other side of the cross, we know that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us. One as if you will. Those days the sins were covered. Today my sins are, are, are washed away. One as if you will. We go to verse 3 and he says, For I acknowledge my transgression and my sins are always before me. This is David. He says very clear here, I acknowledge my transgression. But I want you to notice the next thing he says. His sins are always before you. He's lamenting. He's saying, my sins are always before me. You and me in the New Testament, we again are aware that 
Jesus has forgiven us. Jesus, our sins are forgiven. You only need to read uh, Romans chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, and you'll know that your sins are forgiven. Buona sifiwe. Buona sifiwe. Then we go, we jump. There are so many other scriptures I would have wanted us to look. Then he goes to verse 7 where he says, Purge me with high socks and I shall be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. The Bible says that you are a new creation. That is 2 Corinthians 5.17. You are a new creation. You are born again. Born as if you were. You, you are you, are, you, you look great. <laughs> what a spirit. If you look at the spirit man, you look great. You can't see, play the same player, but it was varied those days. Today you look at the same verse, totally different. Let's look at Psalms, uh, the, same, the same Psalms 51 verse 8. He says, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken May rejoice, um, may rejoice. He says, let me hear joy and gladness. You a New Testament uh, a saint. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 5.22, I think it is, that the, the spirit is joy. It's peace. Amen? It's peace. It's the fruit of the spirit. You have joy. You have peace. You cannot say like 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 um, David, that um, make me hear joy and gladness. You already have it. One as if you were. All you need to do is tap from the well of salvation. Draw from the well of salvation. One as if you were. Then we go to verse nine, 9 where he says, Hide your face from my sins. Hide your face from my sins. That was before the cross. David would say that before the cross. But for you and me in, in the New Testament, we can't ask God to hide himself, his face from our sins. We are forgiven. Born as if you were. We are forgiven. Then he says in verse 10, and I'm going because of our time. He says in verse 10, creating me a clean heart, O oh God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. He says, create a clean heart in my in, create a clean a clean, create me a clean heart. Oh God. When you go to Ezekiel that is 626, the Bible says that he will put a new spirit in you. And he will put a new heart. One as if you will, and a new spirit. And he also put his spirit in you. One as if you will. Then the, the same uh, that is Second um, uh, Corinthians five seventeen says concludes you are a new spirit, uh, you are a new creation, brother. You are a new creation as a result of God putting a new spirit in you and putting a new heart. You are different. You are a new creation. Born as if you. Let's talk. Then he goes to say, uh, do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take take your your uh, your Holy Spirit from me. That was David. That was David. You and me in the New Testament. We know that the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, 13 5, I believe it is, that I'll never, ever leave you nor forsake you. One as if you were. In fact, that in Greek has two negatives. He says, I will never, ever. Never ever leave you nor forsake you. It means that he will never leave us. He is with us. He is in us. He walks in us. He says he will be his children. He will be, he will be our God. One as if he were. And, and therefore, I finish with this one in this psalm where he says, Let's tell me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. One as if we again we see David uh, David praying this prayer. He's desperate. He's desperate. Let's talk the joy of salvation. Let's talk the joy. 
uh, restore to me the joy of salvation. You and me have that joy all the time. All the time. And that was before the cross. In, at the cross, we see, we see uh, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 53. And I will not go there. I know we know uh, all, we all know about Isaiah 53. Where Isaiah saw Jesus on the cross. And he goes on to say that uh, we are forgiven as a result of what Isaiah did on the cross. One, uh, Jesus did on the cross. But I want us to pick one or two verses now. We say this is before the cross. Isaiah is speaking about the, about the cross and what Jesus did on the cross. But we want to look at some, uh, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 54, which is after the cross. Before the cross, during the cross, and after the cross. And Isaiah 54 verse 1 says, it says, uh, Sing, O Balaam, thou that did, did not bear, break forth unto singing, and cry aloud, thou that did, 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 this is King James, it can be a bit funny, not tra travel with shout. Now, what Paul, Nani, Isaiah is saying, he's looking at what Christ has done. And that is the reason why uh, 54 is telling us to rejoice. Rejoice. We know there, is, there was no uh, chapters and verses in the, new, in the original manuscript. They were done, the chapter and verses were brought and uh, they were done for your reference and for my reference. So Isaiah 53 and 54 are closely, are we together? Amen? It, it's like, it's a continuous. So he's saying rejoice. You and me are supposed to rejoice. We were bailing and unable to bring forth victory because of our fallen state. But now we are different. One as it were. The atonement of Jesus, who were desolate, us who are desolate, are now united to God through faith. And the curse has been removed. Amen. One as it were. We look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, Enlarge the praise of your tent, and let them flesh forth, and curtains of thy uh, habitation. Spare not, lend thy cords, and strengthen thy states. Because again of what Jesus did on the cross, we can now expect in peace. We need to prepare for growth and prosperity. Because the curse of God has been removed. And nothing is left but blessing. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. That you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. One as if you will. And now look at verse, uh, verse 3. Verse three uh, I'll, I'll jump to verse 4. Which says, fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be neither be thou be confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of thy widowhood shalt thou remember no more again because of what Jesus did what Jesus did our fear our love and shame from our past are removed we can only say, thank you, Jesus. We can only say, we are grateful. One as if you will. Amen? And I look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, For thy maker is thy husband. Jehovah of hosts is his name. And the whole one of Israel is thy redeemer. The God of the whole earth shall be called. Uh, the God of the, of the whole world. The church is the bride of Christ. And our widowhood is over. We are now married to our maker. The Lord of hosts is our redeemer. The whole one of Israel, the God of the whole earth. One as if you will. 
I want to look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, For Jehovah has called thee as a wife, forsaken and cleaved spirit, even a wife of you, when she is cast off, says the says thy God. Before our redemption, we were similar to a woman whose husband had died. We were destitute, cleaved, forsaken, and hopeless. Through Jesus, we are now comforted, accepted. We have abundant life in Christ, and we are full of hope. It is different. It is different before the cross. It's now different after the cross. There is a whole lot of difference. One as he do it. Amen? And I jump to verse 9. I wish I could have gone verse to verse. Verse 9 says, For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For I have sown that the waters of Noah shall no more, uh, shall no more go over the earth. So have I sown that I will not be lost or angry with you? No rebuke you. One as you do it. There are two kinds of covenant in the Bible. One is a covenant which has got quotations attached. One as you do it. It's conditional. You have to do this to do this for you to get this. But there is also a, co a covenant which was not conditional. And this is the, the covenant like the one God had with, 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 uh, with Noah. It was not conditional. He just said, he said, I will never destroy the earth again with water. If it was conditional, then we would have been destroyed. Because man is unable to keep his part of the promise. And therefore here, the Bible says, as it was now the covenant he had with Noah, so is the covenant he has with you and me. He doesn't have a covenant with you and me. He has a covenant with his son. But we are partakers of that covenant. One as if he will. And therefore that's why he's saying that he will not be angry with you. One as if he will. He will not be angry with you. In fact, verse 9 says, as, as, as long as you see the mountains, as long as you see the, uh, the mountains and the seas and all that, you know that he still is not mad. The Bible says that he has given us a, a, a mission of reconciliation to go and tell people that God is not mad. God is not mad with you. The issue is not sins. The issue is so much you not taking the, the, Jesus Christ in your heart. The Bible says that God, um, Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. He was slain for the whole world. One as if you will. He was slain for the whole world. And therefore, we are forgiven. It's what you do with Christ which counts. When you go to heaven, when you go to heaven, the first question God will ask you is what did you do with my son? Some will say I rejected him. That would be the basis of your condemnation. Others will say I received him and you'll be ushered in eternal. Born as if you were. Born as if you were. Amen. And I will look at verse 10. And verse 10 is what I've just uh, uh, talked about. And therefore, I want to talk to you who is maybe, maybe you are not born again. You are there, you are looking at me and you are saying, Pastor, I want that relationship. I want to have a relationship with God. And I want to pray with you this day. Say this after me. Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ who died on the cross. This day, 
I realize I'm a sinner. And I come to you. I ask you to forgive my sins. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. And I'll be clean. I open my heart that Jesus may come in. Thank you that I'm now born again. Father, I want to thank you for this. Those who have given their life to the Lord. Those who have given the life, their life to you. I thank you for each one of them. I commit them before you, Father. And Lord, I pray that Holy Spirit you may guide them even to friends, to people who are born again, who can help them grow in the Lord. I speak and, and speak protection over and about their rights. Thank you, loving Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.